Welcome back. It's great to still have you here in this project. And now that we have a good grip on the find method, let me introduce you to a close cousin of the find method, which is the find index method. And the find index method works almost the same way as find. But as the name says, find index returns the index of the found element and not the element itself. So let's see a great use case for find index in our application here, which is the close account feature that we have here. And in our application here, closing an account means to basically just delete that account object from the accounts array. So from this one here, okay? So for example, if Sarah decides to close her account, then this account for will simply be deleted and that's it. Now to delete an element from an array, we use the splice method, remember? But for the splice method, we need the index at which we want to delete. And where could that index come from? And you guessed it from the find index method. So let's first select this button here and attach an event handler to it. And so that's the button close here. So let's come down here to our event handlers. Now we have multiple. And button close dot add event listener, click. And then as always, our function in which we need the uh, event object so that we can call a prevent default. All right, let's just test if this connection works here. Let's log in. And now as we click this here, we get delete. So that's great. And now let's take a look at our flowchart here. And so, yeah, the first thing that we need to do is to check if the credentials are correct. So basically, if the username that is inputted here is equal to the current user and the same for the pin. So that doesn't sound too hard, does it? So actually let me leave that for you as a challenge. So just write this condition here to again, check if both the user is correct and the pin. All right, I hope you did that. So let's first take a look at the element names that we have up here. And so that's input close username and input close pin. So I hope you figured these uh, names out here too. And so let's now say input close uh, username dot value needs to be exactly the same as the username in the current account. So current account dot username. So this needs to be true and the same thing for the pin. So that's input close pin dot value and once again convert it to a real number. And this one uh, also needs to be equal to the current account dot pin. And now let's actually do the deletion itself here. So as I already said, we are going to use the splice method to delete the current account. So let me actually start by writing that part. So we will take our accounts array and splice it at a certain index, which is the index that we're gonna calculate in a second, and we will remove exactly one element. All right, and then the splice method uh, actually mutates the underlying array itself. And so there's no need to save the result of this uh, anywhere. All right, and so now let's actually calculate that index at which we want to delete. So we take the accounts and now instead of find, we use find index. And once again, this one takes a callback function which is very similar 
to all the other callback functions we have been using. So it's going to loop over the array essentially and in each iteration we get access to the current account and then we want to find the one where uh, the account has the username equal to the current account dot username. All right. And so let's then take a look at that index. And for now, let's actually take out this part. Okay. And we will then come back and maybe explain this a little bit better. So as I click this here without anything, nothing happens. So just as we intended. Then with the correct user and with a wrong pin, also nothing happens. And notice that here you cannot see the numbers I'm typing now because this is a different uh, format in HTML, but I'm still using the four ones. So one, 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 and now something should happen. And indeed, we get the index number of the JS account uh, in the accounts array. So let's take a look at that array here. And indeed, uh, the Jonas one is number zero, right? Now, if we logged in here as uh, Steven, STW with three, 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 three. And now we need to confirm that here. So STW again, and three, 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 hit enter. And then the result should be down here. And indeed it is. So that's element number two. So zero, one, and two. So that is correct. And so or splice here would now uh, indeed delete the user. Okay, so let's see here uh, what we did in the find index. So just like before in find, we passed in a condition, so something that will return either true or false. And the find index method will then return the index of the first element in the array that matches this condition. So for which this condition here returns true. So again, similar to find, but uh, it returns the index and not the element itself. Now you might notice that this is actually similar to the index of method that we studied before. So index uh, of, and then here we can pass in some value. All right. Now the big difference here is that with index of, we can only search for a value that is in the array. So if the array contains a 23, then it's true. And if not, then it's false. But on the other hand, with find index, we can create a complex uh, condition like this one. And of course it doesn't have to be the equality operator here. It can be anything that returns true or false. Okay. And here we can simply check uh, if the array contains this value or not and if so, return the index of it. So both return an index number, but this one here is a lot simpler. And so now let's actually uh, delete this element here. So this current uh, user or the current account. And now let's get back here to our flowchart, which I closed for some reason. And so we just did this part. Now we also need to log out the user. So that just means to hide the UI. And so that's similar to what we did here, where we uh, showed the UI. Now we want to set it back to zero. So down here. So hide UI and here delete account. Okay. And then of course, as we reload the page, uh, as I said before, the user will then be back, of course, because we do not persist this data anywhere. All right. Well, the UI is still there. Oh, and that's because we didn't change this year to zero. But anyway, let's uh, still take a look at the accounts object uh, in this moment. And we see that we now only have three accounts left and the one of Jonas is nowhere to be found. 
So this means that it actually worked. Now we just need to fix uh, this here and set it to zero. And we also, just like before, uh, want to clear these fields here. So that's uh, the same as we did before. So similar to this one. Let me just copy it here. Uh, and this one we can paste right here outside of the if statement. And then just copy these two inputs here. So close username and close uh, pin. This is set to zero. And now this should actually uh, be complete. So let's see. Well, nothing happened. Uh, so let's see here. Oh, okay. This is a, a bug that I just introduced here. So basically, before even reading the data from this field, I'm already setting it back to empty here. Okay, and so therefore, of course, nothing can work. So this needs to be after the if-else statement. All right, but it's still a good thing that these small bugs keep happening here so that I can fix them and show to you that everyone makes this kind of mistakes. So let's try it again, one, 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 one. And now it's gone. And as I try to log in now as this user, you see that nothing happens and we get undefined down here. And that's because this user no longer exists now in our accounts array. Great. So one more feature uh, implemented successfully. Now there's just a couple of things I want you to note here. Uh, both the find and find index methods get access to also the current index and the current entire array. So as always, besides the current element, these other two values are also available, but in practice, uh, I never found these useful. And second, uh, both the find and find index methods were added to JavaScript in ES6. And so they will not work in like super old browsers. But don't worry, there is gonna be a lecture a little bit later on how to support all of these old browsers.